Hello everyone. So uh, first of all, apologies for not being able to make uh, videos for a long time. However, uh, I am planning to make uh, a fewer videos. So I'm planning to make one video every week and publish it. Uh, and so I hope that you'll see more of my videos in future. So my last video was about uh, MTech in civil engineering at the Indian Institute of Science, which got a lot of attention from a lot of viewers. Uh, so in this series, today's video, it will be about MTech in water resources engineering at IASC in the Department of Civil Engineering. So I'll tr in this video, I will try to give a little more detail about what are the various areas or what are the various subjects uh, that are covered in the um, mtech research or mtech course or masters of technology course at the um, not research sorry the mtech course in, in water resources engineering at the civil engineering department at indian institute of science or iis uh, so first of all, uh, whatever was uh, whatever um, eligibility criteria and the overall structure that is there for the MTech course in civil engineering, that is same for the water resources engineering. It's just a major that is offered within IAS in the Department of Civil Engineering. So. So from now on, whenever I say civil engineering or department of civil engineering, I would mean that it is in the uh, Indian Institute of Science and not any other department or other institution that I am referring to. So from now on, I, if I am referring to civil engineering department, it would mean that civil engineering department at the Indian Institute of Science. So let's go into the details. So. Uh, as I have already mentioned in my previous video, there are five courses that are offered in the first semester, all of which are compulsory courses. So you have to do or have to go through those courses. Out of which there is one course that is offered from the water resources engineering specialization. That is fluid mechanics, which has a credit score of three. So you will get a credit of three if you pass this course or take this course. And you, it's a it's a compulsory course. You are supposed to take it. After the first um, semester, you will be offered the choice of majors, which will depend on seventy percent of seventy uh, percent weightage will be on your GATE score, and thirty percent weightage will be on your uh, GPA, term GPA or TGPA. You can say so after that or based on that obviously you can also say that you want to take a particular course that will also be taken into account say for example based on your so water resources engineering is not a top priority for generally for students generally for students uh, um, structural engineering is a, is the most priority but in case say if you have a very good gate score as well as a very good tgpa which means that you can get a course of your choice in that situation if you want to take water resources engineering as your major you will be completely uh, allowed to do that it, I, um, according to my knowledge you can register your um, choice so obviously if you are if you if you are total weightage or total score is lesser as compared to from student and there are only n number of students who can get structural engineering then obviously it will be difficult for you to get that choice but if you are a higher ranking student in terms of gate score as well as in terms of tgpa then you will have a larger choice and you can choose to take water resources engineering voluntarily now which is not a very common case but i would say that uh, the career graph of students taking water resources engineering is not very compromised as compared to the structural engineering uh, students now let's get into the major so if you 
have to take major in water resources engineering you have to complete four at least 12 credit courses in the major of water resources engineering along with the one course that you have already done so one course you have done that is three credits and then you have to do 12 more credits so total of 15 credits in water resources engineering compulsorily to get water resource to have water resources engineering as a major okay so in that situation what are the courses we'll go into that so there are four core courses or mandatory courses you can say uh, in water resources engineering first is surface water hydrology Second is system techniques in water resources and environmental engineering. Third is groundwater hydrology. Fourth is stochastic hydrology. These are the four courses. Each of them have a credit course score of three. So that makes a three into 12, uh, three into four is equal to 12 credit courses. Okay. Now let us see what are the, what is the faculty composition? In, in the water resources engineering uh, specialization, if you may say, uh, in the civil engineering department. So there are total of five faculty members of which four are senior faculties or at the level of professor and one uh, faculty is at the level of assistant professor. So the four senior faculties are Professor P. P. Mujumdar or Pradeep Mujumdar, Professor D. Nagesh Kumar, Professor uh, Shekhar Muddu, Professor V. V. Srinivas, and Professor Devsundar Datta. So these are the five faculty members that we have at the Civil Engineering Department in the Water Resource Specialization. Okay, now let us look at the electives. So other than the four core courses and the fun course that you have already would have done in your first semester, that is fluid mechanics, what are the other electives that are available within the water resources specialization? This is actually interest of interest of students who are also not majoring in uh, water resources, but are interested to take up a few courses in water uh, water resources engineering. For example, students who are pursuing, say, geotechnical engineering or maybe dam engineering or maybe uh, transportation engineering or maybe also structural engineering. If you are interested to take up courses from other disciplines, it may be of interest to uh, of you to see what are the various different courses in uh, that are offered in the in, in other majors right so there are five electives that are offered within water resources now a person who is uh, a student who is doing a uh, major in water resources may take these electives may not take it is not compulsory it is not mandatory you can as well go ahead and take um, courses from other discipline for example the geotech or structures uh, to have a minor that I had mentioned in my previous video. I will provide a link to my previous video in the description of this video so that you can easily check it out if you haven't already. So in these are five electives. So these five electives are open channel flow, remote sensing and GIS for water resources engineering, water quality modeling, remote sensing in eco hydrology, regionalization in hydrology and water resources engineering. Now, these all may sound very complicated for a student who is just out of their BTEC course. So I'll try to uh, clarify a little bit about all the uh, one plus four plus five. So that is total of 10 courses that are offered within the specialization of water resources engineering and the faculty members who offer this course. So we know already that there are five faculty members. So the first course is fluid mechanics. You may already, if you are a mechanical engineering or a civil engineering graduate, you may have already done fluid mechanics as a course. But if you uh, come to the master's level, you will be uh, there will be some advanced topics that would be covered, like Cauchy's equation, Euler's equation, Navier-Stokes equation that is covered in the fluid mechanics course in uh, civil engineering and the course is offered by Professor Deepsundar Datta. 
The second course is surface water hydrology. So you will learn about various hydrological processes like rainfall, evapotranspiration, uh, infiltration, etc. And you will learn about various hydrological statistics frequency analysis that is done as part of um, uh, is as done by various hydro water resources professionals. Okay, and this is this course is offered by Professor V V Srinivas. The third course is system techniques in water resources and environmental engineering. This majorly consists of various optimization techniques. Now, as an engineer, you may have to do various optimizations uh, because there are multiple functions that a facility would do. So for example, if there is a dam, it may have multiple facilities. For example, irrigation, hydropower, um, recreation, etc. So there are multiple functions and many a times uh, maximizing one function may um, compromise other functions. For example, if you are, uh, let's not get into too much detail into this. Maybe if there is some interest, I can go into a little more deeper into various concepts that are there. But for now, let us be here. So there are very optimization techniques like linear programming and dynamic programming, which are uh, covered in this topic and this course is taken by Professor D. Nagesh Kumar. Then there is groundwater hydrology. Groundwater hydrology includes movements of groundwater and the equations that are governed, uh, that govern the flow of water. And then there is groundwater quality and tracer, tracer test, etc. These are the various topics. So I'm giving brief idea of the topics. There are multiple more topics that are covered under this. I'm just giving brief so that you get an idea of what goes on. Uh, this course is taken by Professor M. Shekhar. And then there is stochastic hydrology, which is mostly on statistics and probability, which is largely used in various uh, work of um, professionals who do water resource engineering or hydraulics or hydrology. So this will be mostly basic based on the basics that of statistics and probability. And this course is taken by Professor P. P. Mujumdar. The next are the electives. So first is open channel flow, like uniform and non-uniform flow, steady and unsteady flow, gradually varied and rapidly varied flow. These are the topics. And this course is taken by Professor P.P. Mujumdar. Next is remote sensing and GIS in water resources engineering. So it will cover basics of remote sensing and GIS, GPS, and then application storing, fall runoff modeling, watershed management, irrigation management, drought and flood monitoring, etc many other topics like this. This is this course is taken by Professor D. Nagesh Kumar. The next is regionalization in hydrology and water resources engineering. So there are many areas where there is where there are no, no gauges like rain gauges or stream gauges to monitor. In that case, the decision making is taken by using a technique which is called prediction in ungauged basin. So the various topics under this will be covered. Uh, or is covered in the mm, course of regionalization. Next, there is water quality modeling. Uh, sorry, the regionalization course is taken by Professor V.B. Srinivas. Then there is water quality modeling offered by Professor M. Shekhar. Or, mm, so uh, it contains uh, movement of con contaminants in environment, water quality modeling in rivers and estuaries, etc. And finally, remote sensing of eco-hydrology. This is a very new course offered by Professor Dev Sundar Datta. It's an excellent course showing, the, will give you an introduction of eco-hydrology and also uh, various water and energy exchanges as well as remote sensing of the coupled uh, water cycle and carbon cycle. So the, this is a brief idea of what are the various courses offered under water resources. And as you can see, it's a very comprehensive uh, uh, course structure that I would say. And I would say that um, th this bias against water resources engineering is not very fair. It's a very good um, course to take up. And I believe that you will have good uh, employment and research opportunities if you have gone through this course. Uh, thank you very much for uh, viewing my video. I'll put in the description uh, in the description various links uh, which has more details of this course says that are offered as well as I'll 
put my LinkedIn profile uh, link so that if you have any questions you can write down anyways in the comment section of this video as well as you can message me on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to share if I have any information uh, that you may wish to have. Thank you very much for watching my video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.